Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Y Gaming. Today we are back with some more Nightingale. And at the That's Future great. Games oh, show done, hosted by Games Radar, today we found out a little sure bit more about the Realm cards. So we are going to go over that. If you are looking forward to Nightingale, subscribe to the channel, drop a like on the video, I'd greatly appreciate it. We're going to be covering a lot of it here and going all out when it is actually launched. I cannot wait for this game, it looks absolutely amazing. The more details that we get, the better it gets. Check this out. This is a few words from the CEO, Aaron Flynn. He's the CEO of Inflection Games, uh, the developers behind Nightingale. Ever since the day the portal network collapsed, stranding us in these realms, we have searched for a way home. Hello, I'm Aaron Flynn, CEO of Inflection Games, the developer of Nightingale, a shared world survival crafting game set in a rich, gas lamp fantasy universe. You may have seen our latest gameplay trailer during Summer Game Fest Live this week. In that footage, we revealed the Realm Card system, a key mechanic in our game that allows players to access the portal network and explore the magical Fey Realms. We wanted to take this opportunity today to walk you through how the system works in a little bit more detail. As a Realm Walker, stranded in a mysterious and deadly new world, the Realm Cards are a way to access other realms. Players craft Realm Cards using magical materials they find in the environment. And those cards are then used to activate portals, which will then connect you to one of the many possible realms that exist in the Fey universe. Each card has different properties, like modifiers, that determine different elements of the realm that players connect to, whether that's new environments, the types of creatures, weather patterns, or how rich in a particular resource a realm might be. Players can combine multiple cards, expanding the possibilities of each new destination. In creating the Realm Card system, we not only wanted to offer a way for players to discover everything that the realms have to offer, but also empower players with the ability to influence and control the nature of the realms that they explore. This, paired with a sophisticated procedural generation system, makes the possibilities for adventure across the Fey Realms almost limitless. We love the choice this offers players, and no shortage of combinations to experiment with and learn. Will you find a realm overrun with dangerous creatures? or a tranquil place where you can catch your breath? Will it be filled with abundant natural resources? Or will it be dark and battered by storms where a lantern is your only source of light? We're so excited to see how players explore all the possibilities that Realm Cards have to offer, and what incredible new destinations they may unlock on their journey. We hope this becomes a gateway for players to discover endless adventures within the world of Nightingale. Thank you for your time. For more information on Realm Cards, head to PlayNightingale.com. These shadows have offended. Think but this, and all is mended. So that sounds pretty damn cool, right? Very interesting. Um, I do like the take on this, just because we're going to be able to go out there, craft our own worlds, and it will make, it will add hundreds, if not thousands, of hours to the gameplay, which. For me, personally, a survival game, that's what it's all about. To be, well, any game that I play, the more hours I can get out of it, the better value for money it is, and I think the better game it is. Without it being one of those grindy games where you do have to spend 15, 16 hours of time grinding to do one thing that you want to do. Not a fan of stuff like that. But we'll see how it works with this. It could be quite a grindy element, getting the cards and the resources to get into those realms. But it does say that... Um, some of the cards will influence the resources that are in realms. So we could go in, get a massive stockpile of said resource that we need for a certain card that we want to use, and then that's set for quite a while. Something else that I'm curious about with the cards is, are they single use? Or will we be able to actually get out there and craft one card and then sort of build up a collection of the cards? There was something that I did see that was quite cool whilst uh, watching the uh, Future Game Show. Check this out. So I did notice this screen whilst watching the Future game Show, and this looks like the crafting menu for the cards. Now, at the bottom, as you can see here, it says Recipe Book. That's quite interesting. That does bring me to a question of do we have to actually go out and find these recipes, or is it something that we will either unlock over time as the ingredients are in it in our inventories, or could it be some sort of collectible-based item that we go out there and we have to actually find them in set locations, or as it is. Uh, as it is quite, well, not heavily story-based, but there's quite a bit of story in there. Is this something that we unlock through 
going through the main quests and then it unlocks certain realms that we get to go to and then in that realm we may find a part to a card and just things like that um maybe we get the actual location cards from doing a certain quest line and then all the extras so the enemies the elements and the resources are things that we'll be able to find out and about in secret areas um it's just something i'm curious about i'd love to know more about that now it's interesting I think the recipe book does make me think in one way that it will be something that we find one of and then we keep hold of them. Um, but at the same time, it does make me think that it's something that we do need to recraft over and over again. Otherwise, would it be called maybe a journal or something like that? Um, I don't know. That's me thinking too much into it, I think. But definitely interesting the way it's going to go. Some people have pointed out that procedurally generated is is not great that's why people don't want to buy buy into games that have the procedural generation they like handcrafted maps which is fair enough but when you are doing something like this with the realms with a vast endless quantity of sort of let's say maps if you will um doing that all by hand is it's not always an option i don't think and it's thousands and thousands of man hours which i mean swings and roundabouts really swings and roundabouts i i don't mind procedural generation as long as it's not the same old shite over and over again. You know, some games do that. They say, oh, yeah, it's new worlds. And then you go over to here. It's the the grounds a different color, but the textures are all the same. And there's there's new trees. Okay, cool. That's, that's pretty much the same. We've just got some new trees and different colors. So hopefully it's not like that. Where the videos and the trailers that we've seen so far, I don't think it is going to be like that at all. The game does look absolutely gorgeous. Um, I cannot wait to get stuck in with it but with the procedural generation that does open the possibility to hundreds if not thousands of different variants of what we can do in different areas um, depending on how big these realms are as well they could be relatively small or they could be absolutely massive and take hours and hours and hours and hours to go through and kill the enemies or loot the area um, but that's, uh, there's just not enough info out there about it I'm so excited I want to know more. Everybody wants to know more. I mean, this has given us quite a big glimpse into uh, the more into the realm cards. When it did drop, when was it? Thursday, I think it was, when they dropped the realm cards information. That was pretty much just dropped in there, and then that th there was no explanation to it. But now, thanks to the CEO Aaron Flynn, um, we have a little bit more more info, which is brilliant. Something that I'm very excited for with it is the ability to actually go into one realm and then because we can change the weather, the enemies, the resources, the actual environment around us, you could go to the same area several times but just change one or two cards and then that could completely change the dynamic of that area and the way you view it and therefore the actual playthrough and gameplay of the entire area. So um, I think that's quite cool. It's a very cool concept. I would like to know if we could build in these realms or whether we've got one certain map and then we go through the portals to the different realms and then we come home to our certain area. Obviously, Nightingale is the place that we're, we're heading for, which is our safe haven. Or it could potentially, this this could be an end game type of activity. So once you've done the sort of storyline and the quest, then this is where it brings you. Lots of questions about that. But I did check out their website. Their website was quite interesting. There's some cool stuff on there. The link is in the description if you want to check that out. Um, I did have a look at the realm cards. So let's. Uh, you can see here, endless adventures. Assemble a miscellany. Um, yep, that word. Um, of realm cards and use them to shape the procedural generation of the next realm you'll travel to. Whilst every realm will feature new dangers, discoveries, and surprises, you can influence elements such as the environment itself, the prevalence of hostiles, and the abundance of resources, and more. Now, everything that we have seen so far with these realm cards, it does look like we're going to have a set of five, so we'll have a location, we'll have a weather effect, we'll have enemy types, um, all that kind of stuff. And it also looks like here we can, we can even get a realm card for a toilet. Yeah, well, needs must. And maybe even a, a, a very happy bear. He looks happy, right? Isn't too angry. So it's all very interesting. All very mysterious at the moment. We found out some new things, which is good. And I do like 
love the idea of it all. It looks absolutely brilliant. I've said that so many times. I'm very excited for this game. Hopefully it doesn't get delayed. It is meant to be coming out in 2022. Hopefully towards the end of the year. There's there's a big gap there, so I think it would be good there. Um, but we'll see, really. We'll see what happens. For today, though, I think we will leave that one there. It has been um, an interesting day. The games show was, was brilliant. There's loads of cool stuff on there. Um, but for now, that is it from me. If you are a fan of Nightingale, subscribe to the channel. Drop a like on the video. We'll be covering it in full. And if you want to support the channel a little bit further, consider checking out the members. For today, though, I've been wired. You've been awesome. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you very soon with some more Nightingale.